Thank you, thank you everyone um, uh, for coming to this really special event, Science Really Meeting Art, which is a very unusual uh, time for a scientist really to be involved in the commissioning of an art project. And I'm delighted uh, to be here to be invited to this launch of this sculpture. And what a magnificent day it's turned out to be, and definitely a day where I should not be wearing a jacket at the time. <laughs> but anyway, uh, um, my name is uh, Gordon Brown. I'm the director of the MRC Centre for Medical Mycology, which actually lives in this building over here. And it was our centre that commissioned uh, this uh, work of art. And what I want to do today, just very briefly, is to tell you about the reasoning behind that um, commission and why we, as scientists, were very keen in, in developing a, a work of art that could reflect our science. And then there'll be a number of other speeches by various others, including the artists themselves, uh, the Lord Mayor of Exeter, uh, the MRC, who funded the work of Dr. Jonathan Pierce, and of course our, our Vice Chancellor, uh, Professor Alice uh, Roberts. But let me start by just telling you about why we as scientists would be bothered with art and why we would want to commission art. So, um, as I mentioned, uh, we uh, are the, the MRC Centre for Medical Mycology, the study of human fungal diseases. And of all diseases of humans, fungal diseases are the least well known and appreciated, the least studied, uh, and the least uh, a, a group of diseases that are is, uh, not aware of in the general public. And this is a tremendous problem for our field because our field is very small and it's very difficult to attract interesting people to come and work with us in this area. Now this is very surprising because fungal diseases have an enormous um, burden on human health. All of us, at least one time or other, and often more than once in our lives, suffer from a fungal infection. These are minor things like dandruff, or thrush, or athlete's foot. But of much greater concern are the more than three million people who suffer from life-threatening infections, and of more than half of those people will die from those infections every year. That translates to about one and a half million deaths every year from fungal diseases. That's the same as die from tuberculosis, and three times more than malaria. But none of the fungal pathogens that we work on, Aspergillus, Candida, Cryptococcus, or Pneumocystis, are household names. Very rarely do people really appreciate uh, the fact that these pathogens exist, or the fact that they have such a huge, huge impact on human health. So what we wanted to do as a centre, really, and as a community of scientists, was to commission a piece of art, which you can see here behind me, that will help raise awareness in the general public about the importance of these diseases but also to depict our battle, our scientific battle that we are using uh, to tackle these infections. We are also hoping that in the longer term that this uh, sculpture will become an icon for all biomedical research. And all of this biomedical research that will help generate very important knowledge that will help us tackle these diseases in the future. And a very good example of the biomedical knowledge that we can gain uh, was in the tackle of COVID. That came from many disciplines and ultimately led us to be vaccinated and to largely get this uh, pandemic under control. And so we hope that this will become an icon for the same in the area of fungal infectious diseases. Now once we unveil uh, the, the plaque, which will be done by Dr. Jonathan Pierce at the end of uh, today's proceedings, you will see there's a little QR code that's based on the plaque there. And that QR code will take you uh, to a web page that will give you much more information about fungal diseases, about the work that we're doing, and about the creation of the sculpture should you be interested. Now the creation of the sculpture, of course, we have the testament to our fabulous artists and the work that they've done, but if there was a huge team uh, behind that about the commissioning and installation, I just want to thank a few of those, uh, particularly uh, the team at the MRC Centre, Katya Romankovic, uh, Michelle Waters, Lorna Barnes and Alberto Monot, who really oversaw the installation of this, but also people from the university, uh, like the State Services, Becky Freeman, who made a, a big role in allowing us and figuring us out how we could actually get this thing planted in the ground. And of course our University Arts and Culture team, particularly Sarah Campbell and Naomi Granville, who were very instrumental in helping us to commission the statue, uh, the sculpture. And just finally, just to say, I'm, I'm absolutely delighted to announce that this sculpture will form part of the University's fine art uh, collection, so it will be looked after by the University in perpetuity, but also will form part of the sculpture chair, which I really would encourage you to have a look at, which really highlights many pieces of wonderful art that exist in and around the University. So that's all from me. Welcome again to the opening, uh, and I'd like now to uh, invite the artist Still Norby, who consists of three individuals, uh, Laura Hopes, Martin and Leon Hampton, to come and say a few words.
Um, thank you very much for coming. So the three of us are still moving and we're going to each say something so you'll get a little taste of what it is to be in a collective of artists. Um, I'm Leonie and um, I'm married to Martin and we've known Laura since we were children so we, um, it brings a lot to, to, to what we do together. I was fortunate enough to be an artist in residence with the CMM Centre um, and the outcome was a film, Our Body is a Planet, which I think you can see on the website as well. And during that process, the scientists shared the most extraordinary stories, films, photographs, all part of their research. And I would bring that back to Lauren Martin and we felt incredibly inspired and it was like walking into a whole new world. And they were very much part of that process, that initial process. So when the commission came across, we, we really started with that microscopic footage that I was first looking at in the residency. So the sculpture reveals the invisible and often overlooked kingdom of fungi that exists among us. It is inspired by the way pathogenic or disease-giving fungi move through a human host and the extraordinary ways that our, uh, our human immune system responds. The sculpture doesn't claim to be a precise rendering of a, a fungal and human immune interaction. Instead, it tries to capture the feeling of a speculative entanglement. We're interested, as a collective, in the notion that immunity is a process of negotiation and damage management. Fungi can become us a part of who we are. We've taken the word pharmacon which can mean both remedy and poison, killer or cure, as the title for the sculpture. We wanted to make visible the precarious dance between a healthy host and a disease-causing fungi, and the tension that exists within that balance. Pharmacon explores Candida, one of the pathogenic fungi studied here within the MRC Centre, in the form of Candida albicans, which grows delicate, branching, hyphal strands from rounded mother buds. What mother buds? cells. Yeast cells, sorry. <laughs> these are the hyphal strands and these are the, the cells. Um, in the sculpture, the, the human host is invisible, but it's present in the silhouette that the hyphae and the mother cells trace. And, the, and these immune cells here, called macrophage or phagocytes, which um, that, 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 that they encounter. We began by the design process by imagining a cylindrical sort of laboratory core, core sample, almost like a biopsy um, taken from a human in which fungal hyphae are exploring and growing in their search for nutrients, while at the same time, the macrophage try to keep them in balance. Working with the traditional proportions of classical and figurative sculpture, this tries to bring the human scale to an imaginary journey of fungi as it seeks out nutrients and avoids areas of scarcity. Phagocytes or macrophages shapeshift as they try to limit the fungi spread. These astounding interactions are going on inside our bodies all of the time. As Adelia Warris said when we did our interview for the commission, Bernard Shaw in a play said once that stimulate the phagocytes, drugs are a delusion which points to immunotherapy and working to stimulate these systems of healing that nature has already provided for us. So as you can see, we're beginning to learn a little bit about patho pathogenic fungi, but we've also learned an awful lot about uh, wax building and bronze casting during the process. So the sculpture was first of all made entirely in wax and then it was cast from recycled bronze using the lost wax process, which is a technique that many of you will be familiar with that was first documented many thousands of years ago. And we've really used this commission to learn how to work with wax and with bronze casting, and it really has been an extraordinary learning experience that Paul from Phoenix Arts has very patiently guided us through, and uh, we are very grateful for this generosity, Paul. We made a film about uh, the, the making process, which is also accessible through the QR code. And what we, one of the sort of things that we were really interested in exploring was the way that bronze has been traditionally used to commemorate and celebrate colonial projects. We deliberately chose to use bronze in a public open space for another purpose, 
to draw attention to our multi-species world, much of which is under threat due to ongoing colonial practices. Traditionally, artists will decide the coloration of a bronze sculpture by applying a set of chemicals to control the process of oxidization of the copper. Um, traditionally, green, brown, black are the most common patterners that you might see in some of the sculptures on the sculpture trail. We have decided to, to leave Pharmacon to develop its own patination slowly over time, and its final coloration will respond to and to depend on the atmospheric ambient conditions here in Exeter. So what you see now is it in its raw bronze state, but we hope it will slowly evolve over time. We're interested to see where that will take it, and we actually don't know, and it's quite exciting to see where it will go. So finally, just to say that this collaboration with uh, CMM has been peer-to-peer, -peer and it has been enormously inspirational, and you have all been so generous, the scientists and CMM, to share your research and your knowledge. The dialogue between the methodologies has been a real honor to be a part of, to be witness to your incredible expertise. To be able to call Neil Gao to check Little Wax, Mother Ye Cells, to call on Gordon for expertise, to call on Adelia to come over with Gordon to look at the sculpture and make little parts of it even, has been a unique experience and really special. Pharmacon is a general call to be more curious about the microbes that make up our world. In its essence, it is a mycelial warning that the wonder of life is held in very delicate balance. We'd like to thank the scientists so much, the commissioning team, everyone that Gordon mentioned, and Paul from Phoenix Art for making this all possible. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, so thank you very much for that. So um, next up we have uh, Professor Lisa Roberts, who's the Vice Chancellor of the University. Okay, thank you and afternoon everyone and what a glorious afternoon for, for this unveiling and uh, thank you to Gordon and the team and to the artists for the, the story of, of how you created this wonderful sculpture behind us. Can I also extend a, a warm personal welcome to the Lord Mayor of Exeter, uh, Councillor Yolanda Henson, again we meet, <laughs> uh, other distinguished guests, uh, university colleagues and students of course to our artists and to Jonathan Pierce for uh, joining us from the Medical Research Council with his colleagues today. It's great to see this exciting piece of new sculpture on the campus, uh, Pharmacon, which carries with it an important message as you've all been hearing about the global burden of fungal diseases. A critical area of research that requires global action now probably more than ever before uh, as we emerge from the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm incredibly proud as the, the, the folks in the MRC Centre know of all that they do in the uh, MRC Centre for Medical Mycology here at Exeter and the advances that you're making in this area. Truly leading the way in, in medical mycology research and making key breakthroughs to transform human health and well-being. And of course, last year, as we all know, we launched our new University 2030 strategy, which sets out our aim to make advances in creating a more sustainable, healthy and socially just future. And that vision is really building on our strong interdisciplinary working across our university campuses, re really in our DNA and the way we work. And there's no better example, I think, than the Centre for Medical Mycology and the way that you work in a very interdisciplinary way, bringing people together around a core vision to make real change. We know that it's only through such collaborations between individuals and also teams, and not just teams within Exeter, but global teams, and you truly work connectedly uh, across the globe, we can inspire the creativity that's needed to make new discoveries for health and medicine. The partnership that we see today between the scientists, between local Devon artists, between our arts and culture partners is a real fantastic example of our strategy in action, I think, which is lovely to see. And the project's been as much about raising awareness of this global health issue 
as it is in investing in the creative life of Exeter and Devon for everyone to enjoy. And we also hope that this wonderful piece will enhance the cultural life of the city of Exeter and our campus and we hope will attract many more visitors to come and see it and, and uh, on the um, sculpture trail and hopefully then open people's eyes to the wonderful research that's done in the centre uh, that it represents. Can I just finally finish then by extending my thanks and congratulations to the artist team, to the centre uh, for medical mycology. Wonderful that you got the bid to create this lovely piece and for delivering such a striking sculpture for us to all enjoy. Really proud of what I can see behind me and uh, will really enhance the university campus here in Exeter. So thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, Vice Chancellor. Uh, so next up, it's my great pleasure to invite uh, the right worship hall, uh, the Lord Mayor of Exeter, Councillor Amanda Hanson, to say a few words on behalf of the city. <coughs> Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for asking me um, in such a distinguished crowd. Uh, the Vice Chancellor, Dr. Brown, I, and distinguished guests, it is so important that our work between Exeter and the University continues and recognised, because this university is recognised all over the world for different things and important things. But to the artist, I, I'm very impressed with your, your bronze here, because um, I'm interested in bronze uh, art, architecture, because that's what, in the past, I used to deal with in antiques and things like that. So I appreciate the work that goes into it. But my goodness, you have got some uh, statues in this ground and to be part of that I think you, you must be very proud and I, I do thank the MRC for and your research is long may it go on thank you very much ladies and gentlemen thank you very much so Jonathan, I know you've been waiting very patiently. <laughs> so can I tr please introduce Jonathan Pierce, Dr. Jonathan Pierce. He's the Director of Strategy and Planning uh, at the Medical Research Council. Jonathan actually has been very instrumental in the creation of the MRC Centre um, many years ago. He was very, also very instrumental along with Anna Keith and what was Carolyn. There, Carolyn right there, yes, Carolyn Johnson, in actually allowing us to do this commission for the sculpture. Thank you very much. That's very kind, and it's an absolute honour to be here, an absolute delight. This is actually the first time that I've had the opportunity to visit a research site since COVID two and a half years ago, so it is a special day. We actually sent three people out on the basis that we were very unpracticed in travel and we would hope that we'd get at least some, one of us here, so to have made it with two is a pretty, pretty good bet. Um, I think I'm just going to reiterate some of the words, but also maybe just to say one word. So the MRC is the government's primary funder of fundamental and early kind of translational medical research. So in a sense, it is your funding, it has government funding that has really um, helped support this. We've heard some of the words around why, the, why this is an important topic. And um, not only is that disease burden, we've heard about one and a half um, million people a year out, um, unfortunately, <laughs> burdened greater than TB or malaria, such a pressing issue. Uh, but COVID has actually also highlighted that and a number of the secondary infections we were observing in COVID were fungal in nature. Um, there's an extraordinary diversity of fungi that um, are with us and amongst us, as we've heard, over 4,000 species, yet we only have three drugs, families, which are able to combat that immense kind of potential risk. And a number of those um, drugs are now, we're getting quite rapid emergence and resistance to those drugs. So the need to better understand uh, the fungi, the targets to be able to diagnose and to treat patients is, is really getting um, a press, more and more pressing issue. Um, and actually we've heard about interdisciplinarity, but much of this is um, due to interactions between quite disparate systems. So the use of antifungals in agriculture can then lead to uh, resistance emerging and then transferring to human hosts. So uh, we really do need to be able to understand this at an interdisciplinary level. 
Uh, Gordon mentioned one of the challenges for the field is notwithstanding that the huge burden that actually the capacity and the opportunity to bring people together um, in, this, in this important area is a challenge. And that's actually what lay behind the formation of the centre in the first place. We undertook a review of uh, mycology in 2016 and identified that a critical gap was in that capacity development. Um, and Gordon was instrumental in the establishment of uh, the centre um, in St Andrews. And then I worked with um, Gordon to, to make the move to Exeter. And actually, I'd like to thank both parties to that because St Andrews was um, very um, diplomatic in its, in its letting go of a real gem. And Exeter, and I'd like to thank uh, the, the current um, Vice Chancellor and also the previous one, made an immense investment actually and really, really helped to drive that forward. And we're grateful for that partnership. You know, these, these opportunities need the funders, the researchers, and the hosts to come into partnership to really establish something special. And we really do think that what you have here is special. I, I, I actually really enjoyed listening to about the, the sculpture because one of the special things about the center is how it brings together both the fungal and the host environment. So that actually embodiment within this sculpture really does come to the heart of one of the strengths of the center. Maybe just to kind of fly the flag, I hope I don't embarrass Gordon, but we did just renew the center's funding and you scored the highest possible score that we have. <laughs> that is, you know, truly international standard. So congratulations on that. Um, maybe just turning to the kind of opportunity of kind of the, the use of sculpture and art. So uh, again, and, and unfortunately through COVID, we've been kind of really highlighted the critical importance of engaging communities in our research agenda that we need to be working with uh, to understand the threat. <laughs>